you have so much love for for Los Angeles and you have like I remember one time I and mean, you just say these things that just stuck with me so much but I remember one time I think we were on like some fucking press tour some bullshit and you were just like I mean we were in like some hotel you know we we're like in some hotel that I mean it's just like you get tea in a fucking cup that like you, you know it's like a fucking car and it's like you know a butler's wiping your ass and shit and you were like yeah, I, I was like, so what are you gonna do next? And you were just like, I just gotta get back to the streets, man, figure out what the fuck is going on. And I was like, that's exactly right, man. Like it, so, so like, what, what, what did you find in LA that you really responded to beyond like the chaos? Like what, what kind of love did you, cause I know you made like lifelong relationships there yeah. and you found like a family in the streets. It was family, it was like, like all the shit that made me weird or would make people uncomfortable about me in regular life became like a superpower in the street, right? How so? Um, being able to hang, being able to like, like, like the streets are fucking meritocracy, right? I don't care who you say you are. That's right. But they're gonna break you down and show you who you are real fast, right? And, you know, I'm hanging out with these people. It's funny, like I'm, I'm 15 years old and I'm in, in this club called the Press Club, which doesn't exist anymore because they put the uh, convention center, the tort down and put the convention center there like on Pico. And and so like Pico, like Pico and Olympic was like crazy back in the day. It was like 18th Street controlled it and they ran prostitution out of there and you go by the hotels and you see all the homies and the hyenas and everything and it was just crazy. And so we'd go over there and drink, go to this place. I'm 15 years old, I'm sitting in a strip club drinking beer with the homies and it never occurred to me like why is why am i being served at 15 in a fucking strip club mm -hmm. you know or i'd go to a neighborhood restaurant and like the owners are like bending over backwards to give you a fucking drink right and i just it's like like i was kind of like i never put it together of like what's really happening here but like you start to go through these situations and it's like oh it's the lapd here comes the fucking cops to jam us right what happens if you fucking press the cops, right? So like, you know, normal civilian world, you don't do that yeah. or, or, you know, things don't happen, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before, right? But on the streets, it's like, all right, two cops, six of us, every one of these motherfuckers will fight. Yeah. Some dudes may have things that, that are worth fighting for that they don't want the cops to have, you know? How does this unfold now? You know, what's the fucking psychology here? You know, and then, you, you see that moment where you see like the fear in the cop's eyes and it's like, oh, we got this. Shit. Got him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, fuck yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. like, and you, you start to savor these encounters, you know? And, and it was just like, I was like crazy Dave crave. <laughs> right. That was like my name crave. Cause so I was fucking crazy. And, and you, you, there's always like the crazy guy. And I guess that was me. Like you always had that reputation. Mm -hmm. And and plus I was just into stupid shit. Like there's a lot going on, you know, like a lot of weapons, a lot of death, a lot of power, um, you know, and I saw the transition from like crack when, when free basing, like people would free base, right? right. And it's like, yeah, the alcohol and the fucking clip and the cotton swab, and that's how people were doing it, right, for a minute. And then I remember when crack hit, yeah, and, and totally different. It was like, like, oh shit, microwave baking soda, fucking rock it up. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Overnight, it changed everything. And one of the first crack houses in LA was like on my block, hmm. like on my fucking block, right? And it's like they would come through it was like like my neighborhood was like rolling 20s bloods and and so like i had the freeway rick connection all that shit so there's like kilos coming into my fucking neighborhood and the key was like 14k and everyone was just trying to get 14 grand together because you yeah. could flip it for 60. straight up yeah fucking it was like in the neighborhood started out like we would play football with other neighborhoods and and so like we came up with like 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 Mara Sabatrusha. Like I used to hang out with MS. Yeah. Like, but they were like stoners back in the day. Yeah. They had like fucking long hair and would wear like ACDC shirts and jeans and chucks. Like it was such a different vibe. But because I was close to MacArthur Park where they all started and I was like a house painter, right? So I was always working with them and working with people and in this world. And then the violence hit and it just went like cartoon level violence overnight. And the streets flipped from like, 
it was like the old heads and you know like oh, guys that played football in high school and just right. like shit like that <laughs> to suddenly like the killers ran it yeah. right so in my neighborhood it was like some kid who was like fucking 15 or something and and suddenly he was the guy because he was just killing everyone He's down for it yeah. killing fucking everybody and 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 that's that violence piece and that language of violence so it's like okay so if you can just fucking kill people and you don't have that conscious thing going on oh you're gonna run the fucking deck you know what's that look and like? for you at for you at that point you you, you you had been around you'd seen all kinds of violence you've seen probably one of the most violent acts you could with, with your pops you've seen that but what about your own sort of like bursting through the bubble of perpetrating it yourself and getting your hands dirty i mean what was your relationship with that and, and was that hard for you because I, I we talk about a lot on here just like how a lot of that starts i know for me it started a lot in like fear and shame like yeah. guy punks you or you get your ass beat you get jumped or something and then you're like you sit there and like at night you're like fuck i should have done this or fuck i should have done that and then you do it but then you start breaking through that membrane and you start perpetrating it yourself yeah. and then you kind of become the monster a little bit and you become that guy yeah. did you have a similar journey do you remember like one of your first sort of like real encounters with violence that you had to perpetrate? Yeah, it was, it's, it was a hash. It was a hash. Like when I was 17, this dude got shot across the street from me at my house. And like, I don't know, I was, I was feeling like a good Samaritan or something. And I like fucking gave him CPR, you know, and the dude like died. I was like 17. The dude fucking threw up all over me and was throwing up blood clots and shit. And I like watched this guy die. I was just like, oh, okay. Did so, you know him? No, no. He was from East LA. Like our issue was like, like South Central and East LA were like fucking yeah. like, and, and this was a different world then. I was like, where are you from? Oh, I'm from nowhere. Fuck you, boom. Like, <laughs> I dated girls in East LA too, man. I'm taking the bus there. It's wow. Like, like fucking, I dated this black girl in South Central, like Compton. And I was taking like the Vermont line at fucking midnight to go hang out with her and stuff. Like, I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. Like I went everywhere. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard. Like, like, cause it doesn't make a lot of sense to me and I see things and I've like, like for me, it's just memories. Right. So like walking to Vermont to go to work and like, there's this bar in my neighborhood, Mr. X's bar, which is like where all the homies would hang out. And in front of Mr. X's like there's fucking blood just all over the sidewalk and blood clots and shit and just like nasty yellow fucking clots. And I'm like, I got to go to work and I'm just stepping over the blood like nothing, you mm -hmm. know, and that was like normal. That was mm -hmm. like a normal thing, mm -hmm. like like gunfire. Holy fuck. Every night there's gunshots, but not like fucking. Oh, someone shot a gun, but like bam, 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 bam boom, boom, boom. Fights yeah. like like yeah. gunfighting every night was it was normal. Like it's crazy what becomes normal. That's it's crazy. Yeah. 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 And, and, and at that point, like, when did you meet uh, Richard? Like when, when was it all in that, in that period? No, it was a little bit after okay. like high school world was a shit show. I dropped out. Um, I was on LA County probation all through high school. So like I had to take the bus down to Crenshaw and exposition uh -huh. and I had like the gang lady PO. Yeah. So she was like all harsh on me. I don't know why I had the gang lady PO because I was very innocent and didn't do shit. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> like like only white boy on the fucking bus rtd back then she was like 50 cents or something you know and it was just like to be able to fit into that environment and be comfortable and navigate it and not get pressed like yeah just to learn that energy can you just like can you can you describe it a little bit like can you it, it, I mean, I, I, I really feel like I understand what you're saying and, I, and, and, and being in, in, those, in those situations. Um, it never really ends, right? Like, it's not like it's like from place to place. It's not like you can be like, oh, I don't need to deal with this anymore. No. It's like it's a constant. It's a constant Constant thing. navigation. Like, and, like um, it's like an, an energy thing. Either you belong or you don't. Either it. you're comfortable or you're not. Yeah. And like growing up, it was always like people of color adopted me. Like, like, like black families, black teen families took me and fed me, took care of me, you know, so I was very comfortable in those spaces. And, and Probably not as comfortable with white folks. No, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. Like, like I remember boot camp, um, I was looking around and I'm like, look at all these fucking white people. Right. Like, yeah. what the hell is happening? Who are you? Well, what spaces are you comfortable being in? You know? And then, and then like, I just really, I've always connected with like heavy people, like, fucking killers like i've always been through it 
people have been through it. What, 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 why, why the military? What, like, what, how did that come about? Uh, like my grandfather, retired officer, other grandfather, retired officer, you know, one, one was army, one was Navy submarines. Um, I've always been drawn to that, um, world, you know, through family stuff, but like growing up in high school, I'm like, maybe I graduate, maybe I don't, I didn't, but I'll join the military and I'll get fucking killed and I'll die young and problem solved. Right. Like I never thought I would live. I never thought I'd live really past 18. So, you know, like that was kind of my mindset. Um, and then, yeah, I got in it and I did really well. And then I kind of got my heart broken. How so? I was too idealistic. I was looking for the perfect home and I found it for a second. Um, and it was like very different world, Cold War world, very intense. You know, I was on a nuclear submarine um, different culture back, back then, mm -hmm. you know, and like, there, there's a lot I won't say, uh, but it was fucked up. Like it put me in some dilemmas, you know, and, and, you know, I thought I was going to do it my whole life. I ended up getting out. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's John, Bam Bam the Dog. Uh, first, on behalf of both of us and everybody from the Real Ones team, I just want to sincerely thank you guys for, for, for tuning in. The folks that I bring on the show, they're family to me, and uh, being able to tell their stories and bringing you into their world is something I'm, I'm just super proud of and, uh, again, grateful that you guys tune in. We've decided we want to take things just a step further. It's a Patreon community. And basically what that means is if you become part of this community, look, I already bored Bam Bam. If you want to become a part of this community, you're going to be able to hear episodes early and all that, ad-free and all that good stuff. But there's all this behind-the-scenes footage, all this stuff that we've shot um, that really brings you into the folks that we've had on the show, really brings you into their world. Live chats with me and the folks that I bring on the show to talk about their world, talk about the issues that they're dealing with, about their triumphs and their tragedies. Just go to Patreon slash Real Ones on this website that you see right there right on the screen that's right in front of you. This whole idea was um, something about building bridges and, 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 and bringing people together and um, bringing folks that often don't get the mic and, and giving the mic to them. So the fact that you guys tune in means the world. Anyways, again, thank you. Uh, be good to each other out there. Rock and roll.